What is my number one tip for getting traction with digital and print on demand shops? In today's video, I'm going to dissect my number one tip for new digital and print on demand shops on Etsy to get traction. And at the end of the video, I'm going to give you five examples of exactly how to turn things around so you actually start to get orders in your digital or print on demand shop. And yes, this actually might encourage you to completely scrap what you've started with and to start fresh, but it's better than spinning your wheels. So let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris and I am an Etsy shop owner of about seven years now. I've sold $1.5 million in revenue on this platform, over a million dollars in profit. And I also sell on Amazon and Shopify, but my entire background is corporate e-commerce. And that's what I infuse into every strategy that I bring to you guys and also to my students who are in my program, Multi Six Figure Etsy Blueprint. So if you like real e-commerce strategy, please subscribe to the channel because I put out new videos every week to help save you time and make you more money in your Etsy shop. So whether you are a new digital or print on demand shop or an existing one that maybe is just seeing it kind of flattening in your sales, this is my number one tip for you guys. We need to stop being so vanilla, okay? Stop being so vanilla, so bland. We really need to give our customers a compelling reason to shop with us. So I don't know about you, but I just cannot handle all these shops that, you know, they're complaining of no sales and their shop is filled with, you know, t-shirts that say, they live, laugh, love. And then they say they don't know why people don't like their stuff. But if you are a shop with no sales and you have kind of mediocre, bland, vanilla designs and you're pricing at a 50% margin, then it's most likely nothing is ever going to happen with your shop. You'll probably be sitting in this place for a very long time. So instead we need to be really compelling as a newer digital or print on demand shop. And we can do this in one of two ways. It's gonna either be price or unique design and ideally both. So in today's video, I'm gonna help get your digital or print on demand shop out of the rut that it might be in so that we can start really taking steps forward instead of just spinning our wheels and wasting our time. So this principle really applies if you are a newer shop or if you are an existing shop and you're not hitting the sales that you're looking for. Now, I really do not recommend trying to compel someone to buy solely with your pricing. If you are only competing on price to take market share, you know, it's gonna be kind of a short lived thing and it's gonna be just a race to the bottom. And if a customer only cares about price and that's the only thing they're concerned with, it's like likely not gonna be the best customer for you long-term. So if you are a new shop, I would recommend having your shop filled with only spicy, unique, or interesting designs for at least your first 100 to maybe even 500 sales. I would not put anything vanilla or bland in your shop until you really have solid traction and momentum. Now maybe you're wondering, how am I supposed to know if it's vanilla? Okay, I have a really easy way to figure this out. Ask yourself, could this be found in Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Target, Michaels, or home goods or TJ Maxx. And I'm talking about things with sayings like live, laugh, love, blessed, hope, faith, really common kind of vanilla sayings, or even just, you know, very simple things, something with like a heart on it, or just, you know, a daisy or something. If you look at it and you say, there's nothing super special about this. I feel like I've seen this in Hobby Lobby at some point, then do not put this in your Etsy shop. I see those types of sayings all over Etsy, right? They're all over t-shirts and notebooks and sweatshirts. And really only about like one to 5% of these are actually doing well. So if you are not currently the market leader for an item with that type of a saying on it, it's going be really, really hard to break into that category. So in general, oversaturated niches that are also super vanilla are really hard to break into. Sure, if you have a great way to put a spin on something to make it a little more spicy, a little less vanilla, then maybe give it a shot. But I found that when super small shops or new shops are making items with these kind of bland sayings on them, the listings end up just sitting and the shop kind of just tanks. Customers literally have no reason to buy from you unless you are solely competing on price. And even even then, it's really hard to beat pricing from places like Walmart or Hobby Lobby when you have shipping costs involved. And in our first year on Etsy, we really can't afford to build up our whole product mix with listings that are just going to sit idle. We have to really make some good bets here and not waste our time on things that are super bland and oversaturated. Really for your first year on Etsy or maybe your first you know, 100 to 500 sales, our job is really to kind of spark interest with visitors and really give them a compelling reason to buy from us 
us and not another shop or a place like Walmart or Hobby Lobby. Okay, so maybe now you're thinking, oh my gosh, my shop is vanilla, what do I do now? Don't panic, you know, you can definitely repackage listings differently. You can update designs to make them more unique or compelling. Sometimes it's as simple as editing a current design that you already have and re-uploading it. But ultimately, if your goal is to build an Etsy shop to make money, we really wanna be spending our time only doing the right things. And we wanna be really intentional with the product mix that we start with so that we can actually get traction quickly and be competitive in the marketplace. So I'm gonna give you five different examples of digital and print-on-demand listings. And I'm gonna show you how we can tone down the vanilla and bring up the spice. So here is an example of a market leader listing that is a Bible verse sign. So we're gonna look at Bible verse signs to start with. So this one says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Market leader, really sharp pricing. It'd be really hard to beat them on price. While their SEO actually is not dialed in, they are ranking at the top of search. So in order to compete with them, there's very little we can do if you wanna have a saying like this. So if I was a new shop, I would never put this saying on a sign and try to compete side by side with them. Really the font would be potentially the only way to compete with them, but they have different sizes, different wood color. So personally, I think this is a bit too vanilla, a bit too commonplace to try to put this in a brand new shop and compete with them. So other things that are kind of a no in this category would be something like love is patient, love is kind, you know, do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I would not jump to offering items with those more well-known Bible verses on them. Instead, I would get a little bit more unique, a little bit more spicy and do something like this. This one says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. This is not something that you see every day in Hobby Lobby. This is not something that's, you know, all over home goods or Walmart. This is a more unique verse that you could use for different print on demand items. So in general, with this kind of inspirational category, don't just go to the top 10 Bible verses, right? Go to like number 50 through 100, not the most popular that everyone knows, everyone thinks of, because the market leader shops probably own that space already. And to get traction, we need to have something more unique. All right, now let's jump into car decals. Okay, if you are a new shop and you're thinking of offering car decals, or even maybe the file for someone to make their own car decals, I would not do the standard baby on board. Okay, you see this listing? This is typical baby on board decal. You've probably seen this on many, many cars. Super, super low price point. The SEO is totally missing, but they offer different sizes. They have different colors. There's really not a way to compete with this if you have no sales. So instead I would offer a unique spin on this. And maybe let's say you still wanna have baby on board. So here's a shop that is doing it with a unique font, okay? So this is that trending retro font. And look, this one is in 20 people's carts. So very simple baby on board. They're even able to command premium pricing. So, you know, you could go head to head and compete with them. You know, you could offer different sizes or colors, which they don't offer right now. But, you know, personally, I would not copy and try to compete with this specific shop. I would probably have a slightly different spin, but maybe still do a unique font or something. But this is an example of a shop that took something that's kind of basic and bland, put a unique spin on it with a unique trendy font, and they're having great success. And this isn't even a very big shop. All right, here's another example of how to have a unique spin on this type of an item with a car decal. So this one says huge financial burden on board, okay? So they are taking that humor spin. Humor is such a great way to get traction, okay? Even if you don't want your shop to be like a humor themed shop long-term, it's a great way to get traction up front. So offering some things that are maybe dry humor, sarcastic, that can be a great way to break into an otherwise kind of bland baby on board type of a category. And you know, this shop, the SEO is not optimized. If you look at the pattern, you know, the variations are kind of confusing. They do offer colors, a lot of colors, probably too many colors for someone to make an easy decision. They're missing the 10 different types of listing photos that every listing should have. So a lot of room to compete with them. But the point is with this one is that they are taking a unique spin on an otherwise kind of vanilla type of an item. All right, now we are getting into a big, big vanilla category, mama shirts, okay? Mama t-shirts, mama sweatshirts. So here is a mama t-shirt, okay? Simple, I mean, decent mock-up, right? But it just says mama. I've seen probably 10 to 20, maybe 30 different shops with this exact design. So if you are a brand new shop and you have no track record, there's no way you should be trying to put that same design on a shirt in your shop. It's not compelling to anyone. It's not giving anyone a reason to buy from you unless you wanna compete directly based on price, which I never would recommend doing. So this one, you know, the SEO needs a lot of work here. They do have many different sizes they're offering 
offering t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, all in the same listing. So quite a few options. The description's not at all optimized. So, you know, there is room to compete with them, but I never would recommend doing this. I mean, their price points are so low. There's very little room to compete on price. Instead, if you want to target that mama category with print on demand, I would have a unique spin on this, something a little more spicy, a little more interesting and compelling. Here's an example of a design that does this really well. Um, this is a smaller shop, only 936 sales, and they are having a unique spin on the mama shirt with the stay at home mom letters across the front. So that is something that is still, it's still a mama product for moms, but there's a unique spin on it. And they have that kind of trendy collegiate lettering going on. So I'm looking through this listing. Um, SEO is not optimized. The color options are very limited. The listing description is not optimized. It's missing a lot of SEO, a lot of opportunity here. You know, targeting kind of like the stay at home mom with a unique spin on a stay at home mom shirt, you're gonna get better traction with that than just doing mama. All right, let's see another one. Okay, so this is interesting. This is a t-shirt, now $26 for a t-shirt. They seem like they're commanding some pretty decent pricing right here. Their take on mama is mama squared. So for moms with two kids. Now, if you took the same shirt and took away the little two, the little squared part, and it just said mama, that would have a harder time getting traction. That little squared, that's what makes this unique. You know, it can be even as simple as doing something where it's, you know, a mama shirt, but you could do squared or um, to the third power, something like that. It's just a little detail that makes it more unique and compelling. It gives them a reason to buy this over just a regular vanilla mama shirt. It's definitely missing a lot of SEO. The color options are really good. The size options are really good. It's not too many choices, but it's not optimized. This listing is not optimized. This shop could be selling way more if they optimize the listing and the SEO. But this isn't a shop critique. We're talking about how to be competitive in a kind of oversaturated category like mama shirts. All right, now let's talk planners. Okay, digital planners. Everyone and their mom is trying to do digital planners on Etsy. This is like the best seller. Daily planner digital planner, printable planner, literally 195 sales. Okay. So a pretty small shop, zero optimization with this listing. Nothing is optimized. The SEO is totally missing and it's only 50 cents, but it looks really good. And it's a bestseller. I mean, it's really simple, straightforward, nicely laid out. If I were a new shop, would I try to do just a daily planner that looks just like this? No, I wouldn't because how are you going to compete with something that's a bestseller that's 50 cents and that looks this good. I would never try to just launch a daily planner if I'm a shop with no sales. Instead, I would do something that's a bit more unique, a bit more spicy and give them a compelling reason to buy. That's not just the price. So here's an example of a travel planner. Okay. This is a bestseller here and it's commanding a really great price point. It's missing quite a bit of SEO. Actually, there's a lot of room to potentially compete with something like this. So as you can see, if you click through, you know, this is a very thorough detailed planner, but because it's more unique, because it's not bland or vanilla and it offers a really unique purpose and a compelling reason to buy, they're able to command higher pricing. So if you wanted to compete with them, you know, you could actually optimize the listing, lock in really solid SEO, potentially offer something that's even more simple than this with fewer graphs and things for maybe someone who likes to travel, but maybe they're not wanting to get like knee deep into a spreadsheet about it. So you could do a more simplified version of this and maybe offer it for half the price. So something more simple, more straightforward, you're maybe able to capture a wider audience for maybe those people who are more intimidated by spreadsheets and you could fully optimize the listing to compete with a listing like this that is not yet optimized. Another way to compete in that planner category, if you are maybe a newer shop without a track record is to do something for teachers. So a digital teacher planner like this one. So this is a best seller. You guys, the SEO is completely missing from this, yet it's still a best seller. Now it's a great looking product, right? And look at the price point, really nice high price point. So with this listing, it's not just a bland kind of boring planner. It's really giving you a compelling reason to buy. This is for teachers. This was made for a specific type of person with specific utility, more unique utility than just a general for anyone type of utility. The way that I would compete with this one, obviously dial in some really solid SEO, optimize the listing description. There's actually a lot missing from the description. And then I would also make it a more simplified version. So a lot of these planners, you know, that are offering things like hundred plus pages, is that always a positive thing? I don't know about you, but if you are so, so 
busy that you are coming to Etsy for a planner to kind of organize your life? Is 100 pages overwhelming? Or are you looking for something more simple, straightforward, streamlined, super, super busy people? Do they have time to kind of shuffle through a 100 page planner? I don't know. I wouldn't, but the way that I would compete with them is potentially offering something more streamlined, like a digital teacher planner, the essentials. You could call it the essentials, 20 page essentials. You can compete with best sellers like this by having a different value proposition. And the last thing I'm gonna show you today is inspirational mugs, okay? I cannot tell you how many mugs out there are so vanilla that they're never gonna get traction. They're way too boring, way too bland, especially mugs in the inspirational category. I highly recommend being unique and very spicy in the way that you present the design. So here's an example of a mug. It says, bloom where you are planted, okay? This is nothing new, nothing interesting. You could probably find a mug like this at Hobby Lobby right now, or maybe Home Goods. This happens to be in a really big shop. It doesn't look like it has any add to carts and it looks like it was listed last month, but the SEO is totally missing. The listing is not optimized. There's a lot of room for improvement within the listing, but if you were gonna be going to compete against them, we need to spice things up a bit and have something that's unique that people cannot find at Walmart, Hobby Lobby, TJ Maxx. So this is what I would recommend doing, something like this, where it's still an inspirational mug, right? It's a bestseller. It's in over 20 people's carts. And this is a daily reminder mug. So affirmations, positive vibes, some like cheeky sayings, slightly inappropriate, slightly off color, very unique. You would not find sayings like this on a mug in Hobby Lobby. That's for sure. Not even a place like TJ Maxx or Home Goods. That type of language wouldn't likely be allowed there. But on Etsy, you can definitely get away with this type of thing. And this is a great spin on kind of an inspirational self-love type of a mug without being super boring and vanilla. So point is, every time you think about listing something new on Etsy, especially if you're a newer shop or if you're not getting the traction that you hope to, ask yourself, could I find this in Hobby Lobby? Could I find this in Walmart? Or is there a really strong market leader already in the search results for this where the only way to compete would be on price? If the answer to any of those questions is yes, then I would move on and try to spice it up with something more unique and compelling. Now, if you are a shop out there and you're like, I can't think of anything unique or compelling, or how am I supposed to come up with unique sayings? I don't know what people want. I'm not even my customer. I'm not sure what people would want to buy. Definitely reach out because in my coaching program, Multi Six Figure Etsy Blueprint, I have a couple of lessons that are directly about this. How to know what your customers want, how to know how to align with your customers, especially if you are not your customer, and also ways to know what is going to be popular on Etsy before that thing is even on Etsy so that it gives you the opportunity to become the market leader. These are all ways to be less vanilla and more compelling with your product mix. If any of that interests you, if you want some one-on-one -on -one help, definitely reach out. You can find me on Instagram at Dylan Jaris. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.